Good evening again, my friends. Are you ready to cozy up under the covers and embrace a night of peaceful sleep? Excellent. I'm delighted to be your companion with this soothing tale I'm about to share. As always, our story hails from the Woofy village. This time, it revolves around the humble life of the Razad bin Miftar family. Once upon a time, in the village of Woofy. As the gentle breeze caressed his weathered skin, Razad bin Miftar sat on his terrace, engrossed in a digital newspaper. The esteemed Islamic teacher, commonly known as Ustaz of Wufi village which was deeply troubled by the news of a child missing for two days, presumably abducted on the way back from school. Razad's mind wandered back to his youth. He'd often returned home late after hanging out with friends, sometimes working on group projects well into the night. Yet, back then, it was safe. Kidnapping reports were a rare occurrence. It was rather peculiar. During his time, cell phones were non-existent. Information was conveyed through word of mouth, but miscommunication was not as rampant as it is today. Assalamu alaikum, Abby. Greeted someone. Razad's eldest son, Diraman Hamizan, returned from his activities at Kawufian Hamlet. Razad's smile broadened. Wa alaikum as salam wa ramachalahi wa barakatur. Alhamdulillah, now the event can begin soon. What event? Dio, as he was known, parked his bicycle and kissed his father's hand. Come inside and have a lunch first. Dio complied, as his stomach rumbling. Nothing is more unsettling for an elderly person than being lonely. Razad longed for the conversations that used to fill his home. He simply wanted to say to his children, who were now engrossed in their own lives, Let's chat, sons, just like we used to. Lately, Razad had been contemplating how technology had altered human interaction, even in remote villages like Wufi. His house had grown eerily quiet since his second son, Abduraman Zahid, had started college. On paper and in reality, five people still occupied this house, yet meaningful conversations were sparse. And when they did occur, they took place mostly through text messages on Telegram or WhatsApp. Before it was too late, Razad decided to revive the tradition of oral communication within his family. So, that afternoon, he gathered everyone in the living room and encouraged them to share their stories verbally. Share your experiences or thoughts, Razad suggested. What has been the most interesting thing for you this week? Razad, the initiator, went first. Did you know, your grandparents were incredibly patient. During a school trip, for instance, when the bus dropped us off in the dead of night, we had no cell phones to coordinate pickup. Yet, your grandfather always managed to pick me up on time. Dio, Abdi, Taj Obad, and Umi Asia sat cross-legged on the carpet, listening intently. I often came home late at night, and the timing was unpredictable. It depended on whether my friends were good company that evening. But your grandparents were always there to greet me in the living room, at least to unlock the door because I was too small to carry my own key. The audience nodded in understanding. In those days, communication was purely oral. The school relayed messages to students orally, and students did the same with their parents. The most sophisticated form was through a circular letter. Yet, everything went smoothly. The Astas continued. Strangely, in the era of gadgets where information is readily available, communication is chaotic. If there's no update in a WhatsApp group for just three hours, Bumi got upset. Bumi Asia laughed, feeling teased. 
I remember grumbling when I had to pick you up after school, and you were running late, sons. I used to think you were doing it on purpose, but somehow, I always knew it was the teachers who kept you in the classroom longer. After all, you were always inside the school building, which meant you were safe and engaged in something worthwhile, and I'd still grumble about you coming out of the class late. Razad chuckled. Taj, Abdi, and Dio laughed, reminiscing about those times. According to Razad, words had lost their impact. Modern humans could easily reschedule appointments and events due to the convenience of technology. That's exactly why he felt it was necessary to revive oral traditions in his family, at least. After Rezad spoke, it was Umi Asia's turn, followed by their children. To keep it engaging and concise, each speaker was limited to a five-minute time slot. The short oral program proved to be engaging. Everyone was entertained and gained new perspectives from each other. Razad was relieved. However, when he asked whether they wanted to make this a weekly or bi-weekly event, an uncomfortable silence hung in the air. Razad held his breath, worried that his children were less enthusiastic than he had assumed, that they had gathered only out of obligation. The Ustaz felt disheartened. His joy had now turned to disappointment. Especially when Abdi spoke up. Maybe once a month is better Abdi. This is just for fun right? We don't need to overdo it. It's not as relevant to today's world. Besides, there are many modern challenges out there demanding our attention. Razad managed a wry smile. The enthusiasm he felt earlier had faded. He couldn't persuade his children of the importance of revitalizing oral traditions. I disagree. Taj interjected, raising his hand. To my big bro Abdi, I think we should preserve oral traditions, whether they're considered old-fashioned or not. It's more aligned with our nature as humans. This tradition of speaking and listening has been part of humanity since the time of Adam. It's what distinguishes us from animals and plants. Razad beamed, as his youngest son had defended his idea. It's outdated, Taj. Dio chimed in, seeming to side with Abdi. We're here to share stories, right? We can do that by sending audio recordings to our Telegram group. It saves time and energy, thanks to technology. That's why people nowadays rarely read fairy tales to their toddlers. They simply provide videos or podcasts to it. Yet, they who making those videos or audio recordings still use their voices. They're honing their oral skills. Taj countered. The room fell silent. Moreover, Taj continued, before his brothers could rebut. Current technologies are evolving to mimic our natural abilities. Let's put our virtual assistant skills on display, Abby. Ustaz Razad smiled and said, Hey, my assistant, turn off the living room lights, please. A few seconds later, the lights went off. It's voice recognition, bro. Taj quipped. Developers are striving to create technology that can understand human spoken language. So, why should we distance ourselves from oral traditions? But please, turn the lights back on Abby. I look even darker this way. <laughs> Laughter filled the room. All right, my assistant. Razad said. Turn the lights back on. The light returned, and the debate continued. The pros and cons of oral traditions were debated at length, but Razad was grateful for the day. The spirited discussion had confirmed the significance of oral traditions, something that made a house a true home.